It all begins with an idea. An idea of an airplane that is so powerful that it can start vertically. This story already began a decade before now and was nearly finished. But real difficulties on making a VTOL jet will just appear shortly before the finish line. After 10 years of experience with the SUXR, it was time to take a completely new attempt. While the SUXR was made of super lightweight composites, now, 10 years later, there is a new technique available and this is super lightweight 3D printing. Printing the test part for our new gear in the JRM. Here are they. Front fuselage part from the Bamboo Lab printed with Colorfab. Looks amazing these details. The amount of work for making a composite airplane is enormous. You have to apply different layers of fiberglass, carbon fiber and Kevlar. In between there is a honeycomb to build a sandwich construction. And after this it has to put in vacuum and cured in an oven. And all these steps has to be repeated for every single part. Building the SUXR VTOL jet took the same time, six months, like the whole construction, designing and building process from the JRM1 project till now, inclusive three prototypes. The SUXR was a technology demonstrator to show off if the used components are capable to make a successful transition. And this works. But even this jet was not powerful enough and has not the endurance to make a complete VTOL pattern, inclusive vertical landing. And that's the beginning from the JRM1 project. This jet should be improved in every single aspect. So the SUXR was just the beginning. Technical details like the main lift fan cover or the droop nose, even the wing covers will transfer to the JRM but gained a lot of improvement for longer hovering time. Also the composite technique has to be transferred to the 3D print technique. 
So at first the complete propulsion system, main EDF and lift fans were tested to reach its maximum efficiency and also power to see if a 100% longer hover time will be possible. And this means minimum five minute hover time. Beside efficiency, the key point on VTOL is the 100% accurate working of the lift fans and also the lift fan doors. So a first ring was printed with the Bamboo Lab. The lightweight PLR print profiles you will find on my Patreon page. Link is below in the video description. And with these wings, it was tested to the maximum if the wing doors work in every extreme circumstance. And they open and close safely in every thinkable possible situation. So they got an approval and we could go on with the whole jet construction. The last weeks Mark and I spent a lot of time to bring our JRM-1 VTOL jet forward. After printing the JRM-1 in a smaller scale, a lot of surface failures became obvious, which were not visible in the CAD. Also the main ducting was improved for maximum efficiency. And the Bamboo Lab did again a great job on printing the landing gears. Find your Bamboo Lab printer in my video description. Step by step all RC components were integrated into the fuselage and the function were checked. And finally, the first JRM-1 prototype was printed. The strength evaluation of the whole construction has to be done in reality. So this is our first try with 3 mm carbon rods. And at the end, this was a little bit too, too rigid. So um, on the later prototypes, we switched to 1.5 mm carbon rods. On this very first print, it was also possible to check the fit of smaller components like this bearing blocks or the inserts for the skids. This is the wing, which is assembled with all details like droop nose, aileron and lift fan covers. And finally the JRM-1 was not just present on the screen in CAD, it was reality. And 
then it was time for the first engine installation. Next is installation of the Zero. Here we got it. And to pre check the working area. Even if the EDF swing works nicely, this first design has too much flaws, especially the aerodynamic and the weight goal was not possible to keep, so we had to start completely new. While we are on our first version of the JRM1 mostly focused on the outer design, this time we take an absolutely new approach. We're focusing on lightweight construction and also optimizing the inner ducting. The lightweight construction begins already on the outer shape. The new version here in gray is much cleaner designed. You see there are not so much obstacles or little hills on the outside and this gives us less area and this means less weight. And we've also widened the jet which had a significant impact on the way uh, the 3D model was going to be redeveloped. So we started again from zero but with a lot more experience than on the first time. Maybe the first JRM version would be a good jet but caused by these aerodynamic and weight flaws it could never do VTOL. Parallel, a new way of lightweight construction for the wing was tested. It was built just out of ribs. Also, the main ducting was completely new designed to increase the static thrust and also the top speed. JRM1B is ready to print. Printing the next prototype starts orange, gray, orange grab the spools to keep them low moisture. Bamboo lab, <laughs> it's much faster and did already finished a lot of hinges printed from rough PLA from Bamboo lab. And the first parts are finished here on the Ender 3 Pro CR10 with the big wings, two artilleries, the fuselage parts. The nose section is done here in comparison with the old one. We 
here we can see the 1.5 millimeter carbon rods, carbon rods are running through the upper of the fuselage for reinforcing it. fuselage is done. We are also carbon rods used. And here they are, the new JRM-1B and the A version. And now we come to a very interesting part. Let's see if we reach our weight goals. A version, 1000 grams. Now the new B version. Here are some parts missing, but here are also some electronics already installed. We got here 863 and we wanted 810. So, okay, it's not uh, absolutely reached, but we are a lot of better. Here we got the lift fan motor. It's a T motor with, with 2850 kV. Front leg mechanic, got 180 degree servo, and here it is ready installed in the fuselage. Here from the lower side by the main engines with a gear, and the servo for the front fan gets installed, and here it's ready working. The servo has also, and the main engine also start drilling. And now finally also the main struts can be installed. And here it is, the wonderful JRM-1, 1870 grams. All that is left, that's super cool, super happy with this. This is not enough, it's a bit better than last time, this was about 860 or so. Previous inlet, just a very little bit, uh, but they are rated for 70 amps and they are just for 45 and they also come with a little heat sink, but this is too big, I will shorten it. Both ESCs are installed. And let's go back into the fuselage. And new test run with the new ESCs. It was super annoying, they were super loud, screaming and tends to vibrate. The whole thing was shaking. Now I'm using these props. I got six blade and called a GAM fan. And they look also very nice. And these props are running much smoother, give a nice thrust. The battery is recharging at the moment. It's super tight how the prop runs. Makes some vibrations, but at the end... Maximum and the temperature of the motor... And this was over 2 kg when the grills are installed. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this.
We are on the final for the first flying JLM1. The last parts came right out of the printer. Completely new designed inlets and we got the canopy, one of the last fuselage parts. The last days we did a lot of design changes on the JRM and Mark will tell us some more details now. For the design of our very early winglet, I worked on the basis of using NACA profiles from which I then lofted small extension and then using the flex command twisted this up features in SolidWorks, that particular winglet upright. One of the issues with the flex tool is that it bulges out the geometry. And in this instance, uh, we got this particular design, but using the flex command in SolidWorks. The last of our profiles was the Lazy Man winglet. In the process of completing our design testing of each wingstip, the root profile is the same uh, on this particular design so that we can get the aircraft. Here is a quick view of the evolution of our JRM-1 model. Uh, the B model here has the winglets of our most recent design from our predecessor. On the C model, the nose extension increased our front strakes here. So our first flight tests. A lot of new parts. Let's assemble them. Here's good visible where we saved a lot of weight. We widened this compartment a lot. Time to paint the canopy. First I'm checking the color. Yeah, it's golden. Maybe it should be a bit more sanded right before. Let's see, time to remove the masking tape. And the next parts are done at once without changing. And the new long ringlets are printed to make this jet as lightweight as possible. So let's go. So the front door fan servo can be removed. The main engines are fixed in horizontal position. So the workspace is cleaned up again. So we can go on. So, last settings on the jet. Surprisingly, the CG fits absolutely perfect and it was also time for the first roll and some upside down flight. What is your feeling at the moment on this plane, Martin? It's very, very nice. Very nice? Tail run mix to increase the roll speed. much more agile.
Also kann ich jetzt schwer einschätzen. It seems that the vibration that comes from the EDF is massively disturbing the gyro and on different uh, RPMs there's different jittering. Mal rumtesten. We want to go forward and did the first flips. This little jittering from the whole jet gain, it was just the vibration which caused it. Mm -hmm. JM1. Hmm. Oh, geile Wolken. And right after this first test flight, we decided to mount the front camera of the fuselage, which is designed as a lifting body, here visible in green by the fuselage, so even smaller wings work absolutely perfect. Gibt's hier sofort Service. Especially on the winglets, it looks really equal to the computer simulations. Air becomes turbulent on the outer wing and even at the trailing edge, but there was never a stall tendency or a spin tendency of the JRM. As next, the droop nose has been extended and this brings the slow flight again to an absolutely new level. It becomes more and more turbulent but take a look on the fuselage. These strands are nearly straight. And in this picture we can see how this works so well. The strakes in front of the wing create a vortex which gains a lot of energy and this helps to hold the vortex which is created by the wing itself over the wing so the lift is provided just on very low airspeed. This picture shows off what would happen without the strakes in front of the wing. A delta wing itself provides a vortex which help to gain the lift on low airspeed. But with just one vortex there is just a half of energy and to make this as safe as possible a minimum airspeed with good natured characteristics is super important. Here on the first landing with retracted droop nose, the landing speed was relatively high. And after some acrobatics, we want to check out the absolutely minimum possible airspeed. Even if the hand start works super easy with the JRM1, 
We thought a landing gear would also be cool, so we designed one and added some nice surface details as well. These are the parts for the first retractable landing gear. First test of the new landing gear. This is saved. This is in one line. Just 8 milliamps, so nothing. It's again in one line and neat. Here are the first parts from the new landing gear. This time no gyroide. Yes, that's a nice part. Kind of orange. Just some minutes left. So in the meantime I can assemble the new fuselage part. Here this is reinforced. First one, next one, so here we got the two front sections. Bambulab is printing the EDF adapter. prototypes together. At first we got the JLM1 first version which was not so perfect that it doesn't fly and then first flying prototype the final one. Only one thing is missing the landing gear. With the steering servo looks like this. That's how it works. To simulate the gear mechanic, there is a nice website called Motion.io. And here you can see I already built the gear mechanic. Here we got the servo lever. Then this is the connection rod, this long one. And this is the gear just uh, to the connecting point. This is the landing gear full extended and now full retracted.
and it works. One micro servo can drive this whole landing gear. See here, wonderful end stop, so no load on the servo. 8 milliamps in this end position, also 8 milliamps this end position. It's saved, looks incredible. I love it. And it works. Vector servos installed. I'm using this engine, 50mm EDF, and both engines are installed. They are super easy to mount. Just slide them in. And yes, that works absolutely awesome. Here you can see the full suspension. This looks amazing. Let's have a closer look to what is new. We did a lot of aerodynamic tuning on the wing. As you noticed on the last test flights, we got some small turbulences on the outer wing, which is super normal, because the, the airflow or the, the lift breaks down from the outside first. So to stabilize us more, we integrated some small vortex generators that will hold the laminar flow much longer so that we can fly with lower resistance and low airspeed and even a lot of nice details were added to the surface and here on the droop nose there is a turbolator added this um, zigzag turbolator this also help to increase the lift while super slow flying the same was done on the vertical stabilizer that the rudders have much more power even on super slow flight speed. What for a history of this jet, the latest version, when all the test flights are done, I think it's time to make the, the STLs also available. I will inform you here on YouTube when they are online and ready for purchase. If you like to see more detailed photos, just take a look on my Patreon page, there you also can support these projects. There I also post the print settings for the Bamboo Lab and all the other printers I'm testing here. So that you got also these nice results for lightweight PLA printing. Mm -hmm.